Hey guys, welcome to a new series on the Adonis JS framework. Initially, this was going to be a, an hour long crash course, but I couldn't get it under an hour, so I decided to break it up into a few different videos. Now, I've been asked over and over for a crash course on Adonis, but I wanted to wait until version 4.0 was officially released, and it has been, and that's what we'll be using, version 4.0. So, in this series, you'll learn what Adonis is. Uh, what the folder structure looks like, how to use the CLI, how to create routes, controllers, models, views, uh, form validation, and more. So we're going to build a basic blog application. The application itself isn't going to be very featureful uh, or very special. It's not about the application, though. It's about giving you the knowledge to create your own apps. So without further ado, let's get started with Adonis JS. Coding Dojo is a programming school that turns beginners into developers in only 14 weeks. Over 90% of their grads land jobs within three months of graduating, often making over 70k per year. To learn more, visit CodingDojo.com or click the link in the description below. Alright, so before we get started, let's talk about what this technology is. What is Adonis.js? So it's a, it's a Node.js web framework, and if you don't know what Node.js is, you're probably new to this channel, but it's a JavaScript runtime that can be used to build very powerful asynchronous JavaScript applications on the server. So there's a lot of frameworks that run on top of Node, the most popular being Express, which I use quite a bit in, on this channel. But you also have HappyJS, Loopback, and a ton of others. What makes Adonis unique is that it has a hardcore MVC structure. It actually kind of reminds me of Laravel. Uh, Laravel, Ruby on Rails. Um, MVC stands for Model View Controller, and if you've never heard of that, it's a design pattern where it basically breaks certain functionalities up into different sections of the application. So for example, the controller handles all incoming requests, it's responsible for communicating with the model and loading views. The model is where all the database interaction goes or anything to do with the data, and then the view is the user interface, it's the part of the application that the user sees in the browser. So by default, Adonis uses the Edge template engine, which is really easy to use. Now, of course, you could use Adonis as a pure backend and just return JSON so that you could use something like React or Angular on the front end. Um, now, this is a course in, a, in just Adonis, so we're not going to be using any other framework along with it. We're going to use uh, we're just going to render our views on the server. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Now, I'm using a tool called Git Bash for Windows, which is a better command line than just a standard Windows CMD. If you want to use that, if you're on Windows, you can go to git-scm.com, and you can download that. If you're on Linux or Mac, you can just use your standard terminal. All right, so first thing we need to do is install the CLI. Okay, Just like many frameworks, Adonis has its own CLI. It's actually very similar to Angular. It's even, it even looks the same as far as um, the name. It's at Adonis slash CLI, just like at Angular slash CLI. So let's do npm install. Obviously, you need Node.js installed because we're using npm. Uh, if you don't have Node.js, just go to nodejs.org and download and install it. Now we want to install this globally, so you want to add the dash G flag. That means that we can use it from anywhere on our system. And then we just want to do at adonis.js slash CLI. All right, and that'll install it globally. All right, so now that that's installed, let's do adonis dash dash help. And this will show us all the commands that are available. So. The CLI is very powerful. It allows us to create things like controllers, models, views, um, database migrations. We have the serve command to start the HTTP server, the new command to create a new application. So there's a lot you can do with this CLI. All right, now what I want to do is generate a new application. So I'm actually going to go into my projects folder. You guys can go can create this wherever you want. And we're going to do Adonis new and I'm going to call this Adonis 4.0 blog because we're using version 4.0 and I want to make that clear. So let's go ahead and run that and it's going to create a folder called Adonis 4.0 blog and it's going to add all the files to it. Okay, it's going to create the whole the entire folder structure. So let's CD into Adonis 4.0 blog 
and I'm going to open my text editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I'm just going to do code dot. Okay, and, and what you don't have to use Visual Studio Code, um, whatever editor you're using, just go ahead and open up the folder structure inside of it. Now, if you are using VS Code, there's a couple extensions I would suggest. One is Adonis JS itself. Just search for Adonis JS and install it. That'll give you uh, certain snippets, things like that. And then also this Edge Template Support extension, which um, allows you to have syntax highlighting and stuff like that inside of Edge Templates, because that's the template engine that Adonis uses by default. Now, there's one other thing that you should do, and that's go to Preferences, Settings. And if you want to use Emmet with Edge, okay, with Edge templates, then you want to include this languages, and then just add Edge HTML. If you don't do this, then Emmet's not going to work inside of your Edge templates. All right, so now that we've gone over that, let's go ahead and take a look at the file structure. So in the root here, we have our package.json. This is a pretty simple package file. We have a couple scripts to start and, and test. Now we're going to be using something called Nodemon. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It will constantly watch our application or it'll, it'll monitor it and then it'll update it when we make changes. That way we don't have to keep resetting the server. And I don't know about in Linux or Mac, but when I just run node server JS or I run Adonis serve, Every time I stop the server, the port gets stuck and I have to go in and do a net stat and then a task kill and actually kill the port manually. So that's kind of a pain in the ass. So we're going to be using Nodemon. Now down here in the dependencies, you can see that basically Adonis is, is kind of like Angular. It's just a bunch of different packages. And we have the main framework package here, which is version 4.0.27. All right, and then it's auto loading the app folder, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So pretty simple package.json file. Now we have this ace file here. The file itself isn't very important, but what ace is, is it bootstraps all of the, um, all of the CLI commands for our project. Okay, so it allows us to generate controllers, models, run migrations, things like that. You can also create your own commands. Um, the file, this file itself isn't very important for us. We're not going to touch it or anything, but that's what ACE does. And then down here we have server.js, which is the uh, bootstrap file for the HTTP server. Now, the .env file, env file, is the environment variables. We have the host, the port, which by default is 3333. We have our environment set to development by default. And then down here we have our database stuff. So notice that SQLite is the default database. We're going to be using MySQL, so later on we're going to configure this file to uh, to link to our MySQL database. All right, so that's the root. Now, if we look in the app folder, actually, let's start with the public folder. Public is where all your, your static assets go, so images, CSS files, um, client-side JavaScript files, things like that. And then in the app folder, this is where our controllers and models go. There's not a controllers folder by default, but as soon as we generate a controller, it'll appear in this folder. All right. And notice that we are we have a default model of user and token. Now, we're not going to get into authentication and users in this in this series. Uh, well, at least at the point that I'm at now, I may continue it later. Uh, basically, what I want to do is just get you building a basic CRUD application and then maybe later on we can either add to it or we can create a different application. All right, so let's see. We also have the resources folder. This is where the views are. Um, by default, there's a welcome.edge view. This is what we're going to see when we start up the server initially. Um, just like Laravel, there's, you know, the views are in the resources folder. There's a lot of similarities to Laravel actually. Now we also have a start folder. This is where we have our app.js file, which is where we load any providers that we're using. Later on, we're going to use a validator provider for form validation, and we're going to add that to this file. Kernel.js is where all the middleware is registered. And then we have our routes.js file, which we're going to use quite a bit. This is where we create all of our routes. Notice by default, there's a route for slash, which is the home page, and it's just rendering the welcome view, which we just looked at. Now, usually you're not going to want to just render a view from the routes file. You're going to want to 
uh, you're going to want to map a route to a controller method and then render the view from the controller. All right, so uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit. And then the last folder we have, full well, second to last, is the config. This just has different different um, config files. So we have the main app JS, we have authentication, uh, cores for cross-site uh, origins. If you want to if you want to make requests from different domain names, database JS, which has different um, connections, SQLite, SQL, Postgres. Like I said, we're going to be using MySQL. Now you don't want to edit this config file. You want to edit the .env file. Okay. You also have a sessions config file. So the last one is database, and this just has your migrations. Notice there's two migrations by default. One is going to be the users table, and one is going to be the tokens table. All right. So when we go and we create our posts migration and run it, it's also going to run these two migrations and create these tables as well. Now, if you don't know what migrations are, it, they're basically files that will edit our database. So in this case, it's going to create a table for us. You'll see there's an up and a down method. The up is going to create the database, the tokens table. It's going to create all of these fields. So basically increments is going to give us an ID field with auto increment. It's going to give us a user ID field, a token, a type is revoked and then some timestamp fields. Now, this is what will happen when we run the migration, but we also have the option to roll back the migration and that's going to run the down method. And what that'll do is just drop the entire tokens table. All right. So you can always go back if you if you make a mistake or let's say you you, you need to add another um, field here. You forgot to add a field. You could always roll back and then add it here and then run the migration again. And this makes it much easier than having to go into you know, PHP my admin or, or into the SQL shell and actually creating uh, all your all your fields and stuff like that, your tables. All we have to do is create the database and then we can just run migrations. All right. So and we don't even have to create these files from scratch. We use the CLI to create the the migration files. So let's go ahead and run the server now. Like I said, I'm going to use something called Nodemon. So I'm going to clear this out and we're going to do npm install dash G for global and then Nodemon. All right, so now that we have that installed, let's go ahead and run Nodemon server.js. All right, so now that started the server and you can see it's on port 3333. So I'm going to open up a browser here. And we're going to go to localhost port 3333. And it gives us this default view right here. So this is actually the welcome view that we looked at. Let me just, uh, where are we? So this is, if we go to resources, views, welcome.edge. All right, now you saw that little animation at the beginning. That was actually from the CSS file. Notice that all of this is just standard HTML except for this part here. This is the syntax we use to include expressions and variables and things like that. Uh, the double curly braces similar to Angular, similar to underscore. And we can call this CSS function, put in a file name and it's going to automatically load style.css from our public folder. So if we go to public, you'll see style.css. And if I go down here, you can see the keyframes and that's where that little animation came from. All right. Now, what I want to do is create a, a whole new home page. So I'm going to go to the um, routes file, which is in start routes.js. And then I'm also going to open up my terminal inside VS Code. All right. I'm going to let the server run on this git bash window. And then for my CLI commands, I'm going to use the integrated terminal. And to open that in VS Code, you can do shift tilde or you can do view integrated terminal. All right. So what I'm going to do is generate a new view. And to do that, we can say Adonis make colon view. And then let's create a view called home. All right. And what that did is it created this this file called home dot edge. So I'm just going to put an H1 in here. Now to use Emmet like I just did, you have to add that that option I showed you in the beginning. And then let's just say home. We'll put a paragraph and we'll just say welcome to the uh, Donis G 
Node.js 4.0 blog. So that's our home. Let's save it. Now, to map this to our home page, we need to go to our routes. And notice right here where it says render welcome, I'm going to change this to render home and save. Okay, we'll reload that. And now we have our home page. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about routes before we move further. So usually we're going to do route dot get or post or put delete whatever type of HTTP request that that we want to uh, respond to. So let's do route dot get and let's put in here slash test. All right. Now we can do whatever we want when a route is hit. So for instance, we can put an arrow function in here like this and then we can just say hello world. So if we save that and we go to slash test, you'll see we get hello world. Now, if you're not comfortable with arrow functions, then you could just go. Let's do route dot get and we'll say. Let's do slash test two and you could just put function. And you could return. And we'll just say hello there and save. And now we can just go to test two and we get hello there. All right, so you can use either format. Now, if you want parameters in your URL, for instance, if we want to go to like test slash and then three and you want to get that three, then let's see what I'm going to do is just copy this. And we'll say test slash and then colon ID. OK, so so we want to take in an ID parameter and then we can access that. I'm just going to put a template string in here, which is part of ES6. Uh, so I'm going to use these back ticks, not single quotes. And I'm just going to say this is the ID and then we'll put in our ES6 uh, expression or variable syntax, which is a money sign and curly braces. And we'll say params dot ID. And one thing I forgot is to pass in right here. Params like that. All right, so we'll save that and then let's go to test slash three and we get this is the ID three. If I put in 500, we get this is the ID 500. All right, so just to, just a little bit of experimentation with routes, but this is just for testing. I'm going to comment that out. All right, so I'm going to save this and in the next video, what I want to do is create a controller because, like I said, what we're going to want to do is, is map uh, routes to controller methods and then render views from there instead of just rendering it like this. The home page is the only view that I want to render from the actual route. All right, so in the next video, we'll go ahead and create our post controller. Coding Dojo is a programming school that turns beginners into developers in only 14 weeks. If you're serious about landing a career in tech but lack the formal education or background, Coding Dojo will get you there in no time. With over 3,000 graduates to date, over 90% of their grads land jobs within three months of graduating, often making over 70k per year at tech firms of all sizes, from companies like Google to local startups. To learn more, visit CodingDojo.com or click the link in the description below.